Welcome to Old Fashioned Finance, the podcast that mixes cocktails and high finance. I'm your host, Caleb Frankert, and I'm joined by my good friend and fellow money muddler, Jason Burnell. Caleb, can a podcast about finance be entertaining? Not without alcohol. All right, let's mix it up. Done. (laughs) I like these cocktails. (laughs) We are drinking my favorite cocktail today. Exactly. Whiskey neat. Whiskey neat. Small batch. Yeah. E. H. The good old E. H. Taylor, right? It has but been Colonel. A wh- Colonel. That's Colonel to you. That's, That's Colonel right. to you. <laughs> Actually, we talked about Colonel E. H. Taylor mm-hmm. a few weeks ago on we our hundredth episode because he did. ushered in the whole bottle and bottled and bond uh, act uh, and mm-hmm. all of that. Um, yep. And we used I used it to make an old fashioned. You did. I did. Yes, you which did. Which is kind of blasphemy in some circles. Um. Well, I'm gonna reserve my judgment for after we <laughs> we try this here cocktail. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, I'm saying uh, a lot. You Take are. it away. <laughs> I know exactly. So, so we're doing the small batch today because we're going to talk about small businesses. Sm- yeah. If Again. you remember, we way used back. to do these way back in the day, once in a while, small yeah. business, small batch. And I looked because looking at the topic yeah, here good. that we have today, um, we, I, I thought, did we do this? Well, we kind of touched on it a little bit, but we didn't dive in depth in this. So no. Actually, the last small business, small batch we did was selling a small business. That's right. Uh, and that was episode 48, which was a little over a year ago now. Just so you know, I don't remember that. I don't either. <laughs> I it couldn't was tell you so what small batch we thrilling. had. It was um, I do remember that series, though, in general. Yeah, I do, too. I do it too. was kind of just an overview on, uh, we did. Like um, starting a business. Starting a, yeah, yeah, running a right. business, selling, all that stuff. Yeah. And, and we. Uh, Makes sense. We did the whole small batch thing. That That's what made this kind of a challenge. I'm like, what small batch whiskey have we not done? Uh, on yeah. the podcast because we'd done 1792 and Elijah Craig mm-hmm. and uh, others, <laughs> others, <laughs> and I know I have a ton more small batch at home, right? Exactly. But here at the office, it's like, well, we'll yeah. give, give the Colonel a showcase Heck yeah, here. And right? I'll, I'll tell you, this bottle in particular was sitting in my basement bar at home, unopened for a long time, hmm. and I wasn't like saving it for anything, but um, so well, it is, is harder a, to find. A, this is a tough bottle to find. Yeah. It comes um, around once in a while. We were pretty giddy when we got this. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And then we got other E.H. Taylors. <laughs> and now we're spoiled. That we're hard- <laughs> yeah, we are. We really are. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's one that I think, before we even get into the drink, um, it's worth picking up if you find it. Yeah, I mean, like it, don't... <laughs> You're not going to go to the, the liquor store. Don't leave store. it on the shelf no. if you go to the store and You'll you see be, it. You will be lucky to see it on yeah. a shelf. So, Yeah, but the whole idea, w- we did a couple weeks ago, we did a, um, an episode about retiring creatively. Yes, we did. And I think as we walked away from that and realized we had a lot of really positive feedback mm-hmm. around that episode, I was thinking about, you know, what about the folks that own businesses, you know, yeah. don't have that traditional income stream. Uh, per se yeah they may be the ones that are looking into ways to retire creatively because they didn't have the traditional right uh, retirement plan maybe Mm -hmm. the traditional anything if you're a small small business owner yeah i mean and most small business owners you know put their heart and soul into their businesses and yeah most of them do (laughs) 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 i had long flowing locks before i started the small business (laughs) anyway um no the the reality is is that a lot of times a big part of their assets end up in their yeah. small business. So Well, we've, we've heard it how many mm-hmm. times? What's your, you know, what do your retirement funds look like? My business is my retirement plan. Yep. Oh, okay. I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Now flesh it out for me. Yep. It gets a little challenging, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. And so I think it's uh it's a good statement to say. Yeah. At least they have some value on their business, but uh yeah, so we thought we'd pick that back up. I think it's a good idea to jump into it a little more in depth. So mm-hmm. if you've been hanging on the cliff since episode Ooh. 48, wondering when are we going to get into the details of of selling a small business or retiring creatively mm-hmm. and using my business as a means, uh, here we are, folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are definitely, uh, I mean, as a small business owner, these are all thoughts that I've had. And for whatever reason, I have that little kind of like nuance um, niche that I help folks kind of through mm-hmm. – um, either exiting or buying a business. I've done that several times now and, uh, really fulfilling, um, yeah. really fulfilling work. Um, one, so the owner that's selling can watch their business continue. Yeah. And then also give, uh, you know, the opportunity to somebody else who, uh, who thinks they have what it takes to be a small business owner. 
which I would say for the most part, you know, folks around here, at least, you know, they can measure themselves up pretty well. But uh, the stats on small businesses are just crazy. So we'll, we'll jump in that in a little bit. But hey, let's we need drink. a drink. We need a drink. All right. So E.H. Taylor, small batch. Yes. Um, like, what you got there? That's all right. Little flavor well, crystal. <laughs> all right. So if you're watching and you're used to watching, you might. I don't know if it's going to be on the shot or not. You might notice that the things look a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the bar is further away from the wall, so we're further away from the whiskey bottles. I got to step all the way over there to go get it. <laughs> um, but also the floor is it's made. Just, it's, it's just missing. It's floor right now. It got repossessed. It's the floor did. And that might be a topic for one of our... <laughs> future our future episodes <laughs> no we had a water issue here. yeah big yeah. time and you're being so friendly uh yeah his phone call to me in the <laughs> morning was uh we have big problems <laughs> i came like, in you know. at 7 30 ish opened the door heard the faucet running i went hmm, that's interesting because when i left last night it wasn't making that noise yeah, yeah. and he didn't wear his uh usual tuesday galoshes to work no <laughs> no i did not wear my muck boots to work that day um yeah so so we're we're kind of reeling from this still right it takes a little time to get kind of back uh, I, th I think back we're gonna to we're gonna cover this we're, we're gonna there. cover this uh topic a little <laughs> deeper yeah we, but it's still we Be got prepared some for the insurance <laughs> episode <laughs> we haven't talked about insurance in a long time yeah but, for good uh, i mean for a good reason right <laughs> Ooh. Ah. So I forget right. where we were going. We with need that, a drink. <laughs> oh, the the point of that whole rant was My we had to pack everything dirty, up, yeah. and there might be some sawdust or <laughs> just dust in general. I, mine looks pretty good. Yeah, um, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Oh anyway. gosh, this is so good. So I think you know generally I mean, we, I mean, we rip on the it. cocktail a little bit, but yeah, you gotta gotta swirl it right. Oh Give yeah. it a good smell. Oh yeah. All right, mm. here we go. I'll in, I'm going in. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Kentucky chew right into the microphone oh, yeah. now, right? Mm. Yep. I, I honestly kind of do that. Kind of do that. <laughs> this is it's a little faster. People are shutting yeah, this podcast like <laughs> off right now. <laughs> Sorry if you're in your surround sound right okay. now. Okay. I remember. I it's always, delicious. It's the second the second uh second taste you usually get a little bit more. Um or the fourth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, initial thoughts for me. Uh, Colonel E.H. Taylor belongs in the Buffalo Trace lineup. Yes. And for folks in Ohio, what that means is it's hard to find usually. Uh, same Even Buffalo bill. Trace is. Yeah, same mash bill, right? Same, so when yep. we say mash bill, it's the same white lightning or white dog as they call it mm -hmm. uh, going into the barrels. Which you can buy. You can, and that's an interesting experiment too. Um, ooh, there it is. Yeah. A little hug. That's nice yep. and warm. Uh, only 100 proof. But anyway, E.H. Uh, e. Taylor is part of that Buffalo Trace line, which makes it kind of hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Buffalo Trace and Eagle Rare are hard enough to find. Uh, the little horsies. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Right? Pretty hard to find. Uh, I would say that this comes around. Th I know this comes around less often than the little horsies do. For sure. I'm For sure. And I'm talking about This is like blends. a once a year it might show up in Ohio. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, once or twice, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Um, but... Uh, the price on it, like most Buffalo Trace products, mm -hmm. is really reasonable. So if you if you happen to stumble like, in on a bottle, this like a fifty dollar bottle. No, this is like thirty eight. I okay, want to say. Okay, I can remember. It's been a it, while. It's really reasonable, um, especially because I'm I'm going to put it this way. We didn't even get the tube. Why didn't we have the? Oh yeah, yeah. The packaging is part of the part of the magic behind all this. Like we talked about before, it's got that tax label on it. Yeah, um, which is just. I mean, look at this. This is just so cool. I mean, if you have your whiskey bottles out, I'd say it's a good idea usually to have the have it in the cardboard tube if it's going to be sitting out and exposed to light. That does help. Uh, it is you not know, accidental. It is fundamental. Oh, that's what it what, says. The tube. That's what it says. Okay. I get. I don't know that I've ever read the tube. It just looks cool. Uh, Pure look. limestone water. It's the rule of the regions. Yeah. Selected so grain. It's just a big. It's a commercial. It is. Yeah. Thousands like of visitor, on visitors tube. will attest. All right, Pretty so cool. we got maybe maybe we have some non bourbon drinkers out I'm there sorry. who are like, let's hurry up and get it uh, get it moving. But uh, I would put it this way: if you are out there looking for rare whiskey, E.H. Uh, e. Taylor, in my opinion, um, I like it better than the Little Horsies. Uh, it's oh, less money than the Little definitely. than the than Blantons. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, in my opinion, most of the time, a better drink. And also, 
I agree. Uh, makes a heck of an old fashioned. Um, I like to smoke old fashions yep. with the H. Taylor for yep. some reason. Uh, it's got a little orange. Th- what it reminds me yeah. of, Jason, is there is an orange kind of uh, like. I, I, it's just it's it, good. It, it's well good. It's it's begging for orange to be added to mm-hmm. it. I don't know whether that's the orange bitters or you know it. To me, it screams make an old fashioned with me. Yep. Kind of like Buffalo Trace does. Yeah. And since it's but, the same, but this is this is just on another level though. Yeah, I think it is. You know me. Yep. Most of the time, I say, well, with a little with a couple more proof points, that would be even better. I kind of feel like this is almost like a hundred proof it's, it's version a, of Buffalo Trace. Yeah, it's a it's a sweet spot, mm-hmm. um, and you know, Buffalo Trace for many bourbons, you know, folks that are starting up is a great entry mm-hmm. um, bourbon, and uh, I think one level, like you said, one level above. Yeah. Um, this this has a, a I would say again same mash, but a lot more happening. Sure. Um, so yeah, no, it's it's, it's awesome. not overpowering or super super proofy. Nope. I'm not sure if I if I were to rank them, and I guess this isn't the Buffalo Trace episode, but Maybe I still think it. I like Eagle Rare a little bit better. Mm, I know that you. That's like your favorite. That's one of them. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So, so let's talk about finance stuff. All right. I guess now all the bourbon guys will <laughs> tune out. The finance <laughs> people have already tuned out because we talked about bourbon too much. So yeah. So I mean. <laughs> Like we said early on, we were we're gonna kind of touch on this retire creatively concept, mm-hmm. um, and you know I think small businesses get overlooked in our economy uh, pretty often. You know, especially in our world, we're constantly researching and investing large companies, making yeah. investments in those kinds of things. And the reality is, is in the United States, and these are some pretty good stats. Um, SBA uh, website had a bunch of stuff. Uh, thirty-three point two million small businesses in the U.S. Thirty-three point two million. That is a ton. They represent eight point seven million new jobs on average in a year. Hmm. So if you think about like the job, their jobs, not um, new jobs in twenty to twenty 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 to twenty twenty one, small businesses actually added eight point seven million. Mm-hmm. That was a big number. Yeah. Um. Now. You think about job gains and losses in the economy. You know, a couple hundred thousand jobs is a pretty big number. So th- this represents big, big numbers. Well, and clarify, mm-hmm. small businesses under how many employees? Um, or I don't know that it defines it in here. I revenue s- is the big one. Probably. I think it is. I think it is revenue. I'm trying to find it on here. Uh, uh, like a hundred and twenty-two thousand dollars in revenue is actually the average. Really? Yeah. So okay. small. Small. So you're talking about maybe supporting mm-hmm. an employee or two. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, you know, some of these, um, they're in a diff- whole bunch of different categories. So you kind of caught me off guard there. Sorry, man. I'm sorry. I won't ask questions. That's okay. <laughs> <coughs> um, so 90% of the business population is small are small businesses. Okay. I think, again, when you think... From a number of businesses correct. perspective, mm-hmm. it makes up most of the businesses out there. Yep. The okay. one one stat that is a little like concerning 34.9% of small businesses reach 10 years old. 34%. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you may have heard in your business one one class. Um, most small businesses don't make it. Yeah. Okay. Most. Um, so the point is if you're one of those lucky ones, you get to the 10 year mark, you have uh, you're in that 35 percent of businesses that made it. Mm-hmm. You probably got something. Yeah. Okay. Well, and when you look at averages and then like the numbers that you shared, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if most businesses fail, <coughs> those uh, those businesses are bringing down the averages and the numbers. Right. I mm-hmm. mean, because a business that fails in its first year right. is not going to have positive revenue. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And they might flash in a pan, you know, hire people, fail, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So. Y- I think that's why a lot of times when we think of small business, we think of, you know, the store on the corner, Mm -hmm. it comes and goes. So we kind of forget about that part, but there's lots of mid small manufacturers, um, you know, tech companies, you might not even know they exist and they're operating in your town. Yeah. Um, you know, we're a small business folks like us, um, you know, blue Jays, uh, almost eight years old. So get you gives you an idea of kind of the vein that we're in. Mm-hmm. So the next question I had was, okay, so we've got a big part of our population of small business. It's a huge segment of 
of the marketplace that maybe is underserved. Correct. Right? Or and and this is the stat that I think is from a re- retirement planning perspective. Correct. Right? Yeah. Okay. And so here it is: the non-financial asset of the owner. Okay. Typic the typical small business represents fifty eight percent of their net worth. I believe that, and and actually. I'm a little surprised that it's not higher. Yeah, so I, I snooped in this. This is the SBA's website saying this. Uh, that included things like um, like their home, mm-hmm. you know, physical assets, okay. things like that. So not money asset. Uh, 58% is a big number. Sure is. Um, and so we would tell someone in that position you that they di- need to diversify. <laughs> you need to diversify. <laughs> 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 For sure. So um business ac- equity was second second only to primary residents which is 45 percent okay okay now you add those two numbers like that doesn't totally make sense well no. they're <laughs> I, I said the same thing it's financial advisor math yeah, it's okay exactly. just move on it's fluffy <laughs> it's fluffy so don't uh, ask questions yeah exactly these are the numbers um <laughs> so here's a few other i thought kind of interesting stats about the business owner 45 mm-hmm. percent of families in the top 10 percent of net worths in the country okay have some kind of business equity small business equity interest so and that typically represents about 23 to 24 percent of their own, of their assets okay so you're in the one percent or top 10 most wealthiest families in the united states mm-hmm. still have about 23 percent of their assets in small business small businesses okay that is like really fascinating to me and and realize we're not talking like small cap stocks Mm -hmm. that's a different story we're saying that those numbers would tell me that most of the wealthy families Mm -hmm. in the united states have their hands in a small business they're part of the operation of a small business yep and so of course i asked surprise surprise right it's not surprising but i also asked the other side of the question what about the bottom Uh percentile so of the bottom 25 percent of folks in the united states only three percent have any kind of small business ownership so it shows you just how much small business represents wealth in the united states Mm okay even the big boys yeah okay You know, when we get into buying investments, people get all excited about, you know, researching these companies that are, you know, innovative, growing, and it's fun, but this is bread and butter, Uh ma and pa, go to work every day, you know, throw some punches, make, make a little bit of revenue and have something to show for it after, you know, a long period of time. So this is, is. uh, this is a question. Maybe you don't have the answer. Uh-oh. But I wonder if that number is even skewed, that top 10% number, because I think, um, what ab- what about like farm families and things <laughs> like that? So D- is I that included? Because, you, kn- you know, to, to have a family farm or even a big operation, you don't have to be incorporated necessarily. And a lot of them aren't. Most of them probably aren't. So that is very interesting. This is... This how, many, how many farmers? I grew up in a farm family. We never considered ourselves small business owners. We and sure were, but sure maybe were. that's not Especially reflected now. in the number. It is not reflected in this okay. num- these numbers, which I, I found very, very fascinating. Uh, the SBA, um, in their survey that they did here, mm-hmm. um, used specific IRS, you know, those the, mm-hmm. the whatever those codes are called, uh, AR, I forget, IRC or codes or whatever. When you file your business taxes, you have to put a code on there what type of yeah. business you're, you're in. Uh, it did not include uh, Interesting. agriculture. Interesting. Yeah. Um, now, so you that would I tell me know, that it's yeah. an even higher percentage because we would yeah. call that a small business. You're a business owner. Oh, definitely. Right? Especially nowadays. Yeah. Especially it's not the. So uh, the numbers are even more staggering. Though. Correct. Uh-huh. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, so really, what it comes down to in this is like, I own a business. Mm-hmm. Now what? Right. What do I do with my equity? Um, I am getting to the point that I don't want to do this anymore. Okay. And I think that's probably, Wait, go ahead. Are you, are you telling me <laughs> or are you, okay. We, there'll be boxes here on Friday. You, do, you can't do this while we're recording a podcast. So that's how I get a positive reaction <laughs> from you. <laughs> no, I mean, I think, I think the small business owner will ask themselves many times, like, what are my options? Yeah. Right. And so well, this is that retire creatively part. Okay. This is the thing that I think when I I talk to small business owners and they talk about their assets and well, my business is my asset. Um, 
It's like anything but else. <laughs> it's the same thing I say to my son with his baseball cards when he's looking at how much they're worth. It's like, hey, buddy, you only get this if you're willing to sell it. Otherwise, it's not worth anything. So <laughs> you've made the decision. Like, I'm, I'm going to – I'm done. I'm uh-huh. exiting. Okay? And I think the creatively part of this is owning a small business could – give you the opportunity to retire much earlier Mm -hmm. than the average person. Mm -hmm. If you go out, sell, have a capital gain, pay your taxes, and you end up with money, cash, Mm -hmm. at the end of the deal, that is not in a retirement account. Right. So you can go do whatever you want with that money. So um, I didn't really think about that until, you know, after we did the (laughs) the Retire Creatively one, walked away from it. I'm like, you know what? A small business owner... Uh, would have uh, liquidity almost certainly mm-hmm. um, earlier than, you know, the rules 59 and a half, you know, able to deal mm-hmm. withdrawal without penalty kind of thing. So um, I think that's a really important note. The problem, if you have a great accountant, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, is that <laughs> your uh, cost basis is probably pretty, pretty low. low. <laughs> <laughs> so you might end up paying a significant percentage in taxes. Yeah. So that has to be factored into this when you're thinking about, you know, either retiring or taking a sabbatical or doing an encore career of some sort. Um, it, you know, many small business owners I talk to come to the table with like, I just don't want the responsibility anymore. Mm-hmm. It's not that they don't want to work. Yeah. Okay. I might take they a break. They don't want the, the constant, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I think it's a grind. The, yeah. The rigors of yeah. everyday business ownership. Yeah. There's so many. Guess why I don't own a business. <laughs> You get to handle this. Yeah, stuff, you man. said that when we flooded this place <laughs> a couple weeks yeah. ago. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry about that, but yes, that is one of the. I first know you wanted to go to Disney, man, but I would have given you <laughs> the week <laughs> off. Okay. Hey, uh, this is one of the reasons I don't own a business. <laughs> you said that. I'm really sorry about this. You right now. you actually kind of said it just like that. Like I know <laughs> I'm sorry for you, <laughs> but I love that I, I I can feel open enough to say this is what's going through my mind right now. Yeah, exactly. Totally not sensitive to the topic. But yeah, yeah. Hey. well, it, it actually kind of helps. I'll be honest. See you guys. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't do that. You were running a shop back just true. like me. So that's true. But at the end of the day, you knew I was all still of my coolest stuff is here. I know you did say that. So, so, you know, I think a couple of things to think about. So we're, we're exiting the business. I'm going to pick on a few of my favorites because mm-hmm. I think that's what this is kind of about. Yeah. If I'm a small business owner, <coughs> which I am. I would love to see the business continue to operate. Mm-hmm. You put your heart and soul into it. I mean, maybe you're in a meat packing business and you're like, I don't really care. Yeah. But even I found those an opportunity, but I'm not passionate about it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even those. Uh, most we don't fr- see a lot of that. Yeah. Though. No. I mean, I would love to see it continue. So I started thinking about, can I one, get a family member in mm-hmm. uh, that I could, you know, I guess kind of get molded into the methods. Um, I think that's probably one of the most common. Mm-hmm, sure. Sell the business to someone that's in your family. Let them continue the legacy. Um, out of all of these, though, this is probably my least favorite. Yeah. Um, I have seven well, kids. Well, it gets messy. It gets messy. I love them, but I don't want them to feel like they have an obligation. Sure. And so uh, I'm actually really, really have a strong conviction there. Um, this was a career path I chose, yeah. Um, and they didn't necessarily. Uh, if it's just easy, I don't think they'll have the same passion. This is where farming really gets oh, definitely, kinda, like, definitely personal. Right? It does well because there are there are a healthy number of farmers out there that begrudge farming. Yeah, or they just feel like they're doing it out of obligation. There's also a lot of a lot of them out there that say, "I I built this business. I built this." You know, I'll say in air quotes, empire, and I have nobody that wants to take it on. And right. it feels like uh, a slight almost. Yeah. I don't know. There's something a little bit different when it comes to owning land and things like that. that you uh, definitely get that more than I do. Um, I've not, I wasn't raised. I, I guess, but a small business would be a little bit different. It, it does. My experience has been with other small business owners. It feels different. Yeah. Okay. Um, it feels like, you know, you you can't look out across an 80 acre mm-hmm. field and not like have some sense of like connection to it, I guess. Yes, I think it's is what good it, to own land. I can put my feet <laughs> in the dirt, I guess, <laughs> you know, 
Um, I guess I could do that here, but right now I'd get a splinter because yeah. all we have is OSB for flooring. <laughs> I mean, we take our, our shoes off a lot, but not lately. Not lately. <laughs> not lately. So um, so the family member option, I think, is always a good one. Um, but I, your least favorite. My least favorite. Yeah. Kay. And Kay. most and most of the time, most cases there, you're going to do some kind of buy-sell arrangement. Mm-hmm. You're probably going to finance the family member. Uh, they'll buy you out a little bit at a time. Mm-hmm. My recommendation there is they always should have skin in the game. Yeah. Uh, save up, put a nice down payment, pay you on a regular basis. But that still kind of keeps you connected to the business. And that is one of the reasons I don't like it. Yeah. Okay. So the next one, I, I think my next favorite, probably my probably my second least favorite okay. is um, just finding someone that you're going to like mentor into owning the business and then selling it like okay. training up your replacement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kay. Um, I, I just think that that is kind of similar to a family member. Okay. It feels like family. It does. Mm-hmm. Yep. The one that I actually probably prefer and like the most is selling to employees. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have learned a lot about this and com- not an employee. Nope. Empl- All to employees. the employees. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think in many cases, and not in this particular case, like Blue Jay, um, uh, owners of businesses become almost larger than life. Okay, and I just think of you know some small businesses. Yeah, you're not in danger of that. No, not at all. (laughs) Not at all. I don't want to sound arrogant. So, but you know, it's hard to replace those people. Sure. You know, like they represented. In a lot of ways, it's a business built around a personality right. or a person right. or a, a passion. Exactly. Right? And it, I mean, and many times these businesses have the names mm-hmm. associated. Like it's yeah. like, you know, um, I'm buying Ken's furniture, you know? Yeah. Ken's At least it's a first Ken. name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, that's, you know what? It's funny that you say that. Cause I've never liked the idea of a last name being on a business. Cause mm-hmm. it really, well, I can I'm think of some examples. Yeah. Lots, lots. Uh-huh. I mean, I think, I th- every time I think of a small like a last name in a business, I think of like a law firm. Yeah, and I, I mean, Isn't it funny all the name changes they go. Through? Yeah, <laughs> I remember when there were seven names on this building. Now there are only three. Yeah, they must really be struggling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. No, I mean it's just one of those things that I I really like that as an option. Okay, um, and explain I, that a little bit. How do you sell to employees? Yeah, so there's there's several ways. Um, a lot of times it's done through like an ESOP program, so an okay. employee stock, stock option, option. Yep. purchase plan. Yep. Like um, uh, sometimes it's literally just sold el- like as a membership interest in an mm-hmm. LLC. Um, many times it's funded by the business, okay, which is really really cool. Um, you might be able to like control how this all goes down. But almost always you're replacing the owner with some kind of manager, CEO, someone to run the operation, Mm -hmm. continue the legacy, um, benefit every employee that's there and continues to to work there. I I just I like that feel. Um, But that's my favorite. Okay. Okay. Other simple ones, just sell everything, liquidate. Okay. Sell. Sounds feels kind of cold. It is. Especially um, if you've got employees yep, that uh, yep. you care about, sell to yeah. a competitor. Okay, yeah, so, you know, even colder, <laughs> even colder. <laughs> um, sometimes it's someone that's just trying to enter the market where sure. you're at. Yeah, so that's that's good. So those are some of the other options. One thing I want to mention though, kind of run out of time. Retain real estate uh, as a possibility. So if you have an office, uh huh, do at least with the option to buy with the new owner. Okay, keep getting rental income. Yeah. So um, that kind of goes into those uh, the streams of income episodes that we did. It's down the, passive. You know. It's it's um, usually in a commercial uh, lease. You're less responsible for the upkeep. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's a really good option. Help support. Just your make life. sure you're not responsible for when a water filter breaks and floods your <laughs> office. <laughs> and if you are responsible, you better be taking care of it. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, that allows you like maybe a, a bridge between your um, selling your small business in an encore career or, yeah. you know, maybe your age is young and you need to get to, you know, social security, I, things like that. So I know you've talked about what's your favorite, what's your least favorite. I'm a really big fan of the retaining real estate option because I like streams of income. Yep. Because realize if you're a small business owner, you've still paid into social security and uh-huh. self-employment ta- through self-employment taxes and things sure. like that, of course, right? So you're diversifying your your uh, income stream. And I think when you, what 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 we want to take out of this, I guess, is 
we're talking about retiring creatively, uh, a lot of business owners just say, I'm going to grind, I'm going to work hard, and one day this business is going to be worth something. How do you turn that into, how do you take the sale of a business, Jason, mm-hmm. and turn it into, this is my retirement now? I mean, you're not, I, I know you're not talking about, take that money out and put it into annu- annuity, right? No, I mean, no, not at all. Um, but yeah. the real estate thing is annuitizing yes. a portion of your business and generating an income stream. It right? almost that always kinda... makes the structure easier to you because if you have like a half a million dollar piece of real estate and mm-hmm. you're selling a business, it's just harder to finance. And let's say, you know, the new owner just does a terrible job. At least you still have something there, mm-hmm. um, uh, a piece of real estate that you still own, retain. But it does keep you connected. Okay, so if you want all of that to be gone, you got to think through that. Yeah. Um, and you know, you you kind of touched on a, a point. You, you know, lots of folks are talented in doing valuations of small businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, you definitely need to look into that. Understand like trade groups, things like that. Do uh, evaluations of similar type businesses on a regular basis, and yeah. you need that. Put that in your balance sheet. And you know it's what I say thing. all the time? CPAs. Yeah, exactly. That's actually what they do. They, they do it every day. <laughs> Not just individual tax returns, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, so, yeah. yeah, the valuation thing I think is really interesting because that's um, getting an accurate valuation of your business is important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is one of your niche niches, niches. niches. Like Marsh. I look, <laughs> I'm probably not going to come up with a great valuation for your business. Right. Right. Um, I mean, business owners are a great resource for yeah, for, because for I'm doing it. But also, personally. yeah, like 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 we said, you know, CPAs and things like that. I would mm-hmm. get a couple of opinions, right? For um, sure, and, and actually and a couple I, of methods. I like the uh, small business owner method. Uh, that back in the napkin calculation uh-huh. is usually really dang accurate. Um, Isn't it surprising how sometimes the simplest mm-hmm. is generally yep. the closest to the n- the number? I yep. mean, yep, yeah. yeah. This has been interesting. It has. I feel like we could. I feel go like longer. We could go on and on, and yeah. I know we talked a lot about this whiskey. Which, by the way, mine's gone. Mine is too. Darn it, that was good. Well, I mean, I got a little trails here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm all out. All right, um, but yeah, this this is interesting. I guess you know, if you're listening to this podcast, and you're especially if you're a business owner, if you're not a business owner, you might say, "Wow, that's really interesting." If you're a business owner and you're in this boat, uh, I think, like like you said, one of mm-hmm. the keys here is accurate valuations. Um, working with someone who who understands this game, um, <laughs> this is. I I want to say this is not a plug for our business, but uh, I mean it's a podcast that our business puts on. <laughs> uh, you know, a financial advisor who's also a business owner is probably a good person to talk to. Yeah, um, I, I I think it. I agree with you. <laughs> and you have a lot of fun with this stuff I, too. I do. It just scratches an itch I have. I don't know. I'm a nerd. Gives me all kinds of anxiety. I know it does. I uh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you're listening and you're wondering, you know, what's my business worth? How yeah. you know, maybe my plan was to hang on for ten years, but I don't know. Do I need to uh, mm-hmm. get some help? Talk to some folks. Exactly. Um, you need to know. Don't don't put your head in the sand and just assume that it's going to happen on its own. Yeah. You, you should ha- you should be thinking about this. Look, you're a business owner. You're uh, ten years out. Even. You you probably haven't been conventional about a lot of things. Why would you approach your retirement from a conventional? There's no standpoint? way in a retire creatively scenario. I wouldn't have a small business in it. I'm just going to yeah. tell you that right okay. out right out front. Um, if you really are into non traditional retirement plans you need to have this going well i know we're going over here but i would just the last thing i would say was uh would would be if you're interested in this sh- give us some feedback yeah, let yeah. us know that you want to learn more about this yeah we'll do we can a, do, we'll do some more yeah. um if we're just talking to the wall here we'll stop now but yeah and um, another thing <laughs> i'm just kidding. seriously no all I'm right just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well feel like we couldn't stop we can't yeah. stop for some reason <laughs> we need to stop i know thanks okay. for having a That's drink enough. with us this week folks it's time to close out the tab if you have a question or a topic you want addressed on the old-fashioned finance podcast be sure to email us at podcast at bluejfg.com we'd love to hear from you don't forget to share the show with someone you love or just someone who needs a little money modeling themselves you can stay up to date with the latest action by following us on facebook Old Fashioned Finance is brought to you by Blue Jay Financial Group, that's bluejfg.com, and produced by Pottery Studios. We've been your hosts, Caleb and Jason. Cheers. Cheers. Empty glasses. Yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> you could share this with people you don't love, too, by the way. We should say that. That's true. Yeah. Share this with someone you, you don't hate. love, <laughs> but needs help. In the meantime, get yourself some of the, the Colonel. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Taylor.
Blue Jay Financial Group, LLC. Blue Jay is a registered investment advisor registered with the state of Ohio. Registration does not imply a certain level of skill or training. The presence of this advertisement on this podcast shall not be directly or indirectly interpreted as a solicitation of investment advisory services to persons of another jurisdiction unless otherwise permitted by statute. Follow up or individualized responses to a consumer in a particular state by Blue Jay and the rendering of personalized investment advice for compensation shall not be made without first complying with jurisdiction requirements or pursuant an applicable state exemption. All verbal and written consent on this presentation is for information purposes only. Opinions expressed herein are solely those of Blue Jay unless otherwise otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources, and no representations are made by our firm as to other parties' informational accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with an advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation.